buckle up for another episode uh, of Ghost Facers. <laughs> a supernatural rewatch podcast. My name is Richard and sitting shotgun <laughs> is always my brother in podcasting, Reed. Honk. <laughs> in this episode, we are very confidently dealing with our emotions and the loss of our father. Yeah. Just like really handling that well. We are slide whistle. Yeah, uh, we we get really into the art accuracy of clowning as an industry. Yeah, really, it's about innocence after experience. Uh, there's <laughs> it's not about acting; it's about reacting. Let's get into it. Ghost, ghost facers, we face a ghost. We're others, we're not. We're ghosts. Ghost facers, stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot. Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're discussing season two, episode two. Everybody loves a clown. Yeah, this is uh, this is the one with the Joker. Yeah, yeah, that's the right thing we're talking about. Yeah, everybody loves a clown. Is a classic rock song by Gary Lewis and the Playboys, yes. released in 1965. That's right. I was one of the Playboys, you know, back in 1965. I'm sure you were. Just me and Hugh in the grotto. <laughs> Do you really want to implicate yourself in that? Just me and Hugh. Just in, me and Hugh in the grotto. In the grotto. Yeah, hadn't hired any of the buddies yet. I, I kept being told I was getting the, the centerfold. <laughs> this episode aired October 5th, 2006. Right. Getting spooky October. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we are. Yeah, October. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> Every time we record in the morning, it's the weirdest energy. Woo! October. Oh, God. Yeah, October 5th, 2006. We all remember where we were. <laughs> How could you forget? Never forget. Hashtag never forget. <laughs> October. October 5th, 2006. <laughs> That's what that hashtag's about, right? I remember when the two pumpkins fell. <laughs> oh, no. What? I had a friend in university, just speaking of 2006, I guess, that had this t-shirt that was just these two <laughs> dinosaurs and it just said, never forget on it. It's like one of my favorite t-shirts I've ever seen. That's a pretty good one. I yeah. like that a lot. This episode was written by John Shaban. Of course. Directed by Phil Screecha. Yeah. Viewed by an estimated 3.34 million viewers. Right, right on. Down from the previous episode. But, you know, we're in the, the threes. Yeah, I th I feel like we're I'm not saying like I know what that means. But... You know, like classic television, uh, middling show. <laughs> we're in the threes. You get it. Yeah, a classic show that will live for fifteen years. Yeah, because they don't go that far from this number. I think that's why. I, yeah, I think they... it probably kind of stays around there, right? Yeah, yeah, they stick in the threes basically the whole run. Right. I, I think. I mean, it's a testament to the loyalty of the fan base and very dead. Well, and also, I mean, I, but also because it's been on for so long, I think it's like that new fans find, because like, I'm sure there are people that like watched the first five seasons that dropped off and then other people came in. They were like, no, I actually like love the later stuff. Blah, blah, blah. People like, who just watched the first five seasons. I don't know what happened. after. <laughs> stay tuned to find out. Yeah, stay tuned for like a two and a half years from now or whatever. <laughs> I don't. Is it that long? No, no. We we go through the we first do, five. Pretty we do quick. roughly two seasons a year. <laughs> yeah. So we've got. I mean, maybe it is a year and a half. It's a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get to our favorite section. Yeah. International titles. So I mean, again, like last week, it's the name of a song title, but I'm willing to bet that the international titles are different. Well, like here's... Mo largely different than everybody loves a clown because I I don't know if it does that just ring true like does it have the same sort of like hook in other countries as it does in the states or I don't know Canada? I mean I think every country has a a clown I mean yes I I'm not saying the title doesn't have the word clown in it but I just mean like the phrase everybody loves a clown means something like classic rock wise fair. 
Let's find out. Okay. So, international titles. Okay. For basically, I'd say a lot of them. Like, the Finnish one is Everybody Loves a Clown. Come on, Finland. The Brazilian one is the same. Oh, come on, Brazil. The French and Hungarian... Uh, telekinetic Clown. ...is The Clown. Yeah, fucking, of course. I, I'm <laughs> I'm really looking forward to uh, Gillian Anderson as Ronald McDonald in the second season. <laughs> In the cloud. <laughs> oh my god. You just pitched the perfect SNL sketch. <laughs> doing doing a McDonald's theme the crown parody. That's that's mwah. oh chef's kiss. Yeah, molto bene. I love it. And the German, the Polish, and she's the gotta Italian. like tell Grimace that he can't be flying <laughs> in the Air Force anymore. He's got duties and responsibilities. I should have known. You, you, oh. You've got a lot to say about this. Fuck. We'll get to that season where everyone just fucking hates Mayor McCheese or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone just harasses the 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 yeah. hamburglar. The hamburglar turns out was like a pretty good guy, but like was the fall guy for the rest of the McDonald's family. Yeah. I hate how much I like this idea. And all the kids chased the it it, it him into a like a side to like a oh, post wait. while it was driving. Oh my god. Oh no, so, sorry. You you made you made it go to the Diana thing. I was going to say, are we setting up the Hamburglar to be Princess Margaret? Oh, I was <laughs> like, doing Diana. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> so, the German, Polish and Italian title right are Everybody Loves Clowns. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, that's factually inaccurate. <laughs> Everybody loves a clown feels like you're being coy about it. Like, I mean, they don't, but hi, you're going like... Hi, my name's Bobo. This is about my family. We live in Long Island. I got two kids. <laughs> Ray Romano as the clown. Yeah. Everybody loves clowns. Hey, Ma, where are my squeaky shoes? <laughs> you, you might be wondering, how could I get all of my fans, friends and family into this small car? Well, you know, everybody loves clowns. <laughs> Dabra, where's my honky horn? <laughs> hey, hey, Ma. Uh, <laughs> you, you left your unicycle over at my place. <laughs> <laughs> We're pitching a lot of really good SNL sketches right now. I think we got to actually like put our package together. Who knew that the the clones would bring this up? So good. TV guide. Just could you have one more? I could see it in your eyes. No, I don't. <laughs> I actually, I'm surprised that there's not like a real like off the wall title this week though. Painted faces in blood or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I I was surprised too. I was like, wow, it's mostly just variations on yeah. everybody loves a clown. I guess enough said. Maybe a clown is a like universally scary sort of thing. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> TV Guide describes this episode as Sam and Dean meet a woman, Samantha Ferris, from their father's past who may be able to help them track the demon. But they get sidetracked by a homicidal clown who talks, ch- who talks children into letting them into their house, kills their parents, and vanishes. It's not terrifying at all. <sighs> Yeah, as a parent. Yeah. That's not something. Just who who's has a child at the round the age that would probably be excited to see a clown. My, and and who's uh knows how to work the lock on the door. And dumb enough to let a clown in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's a call out my kid, but it's yeah. A child brain. I yeah. mean it'd be weird if it was been very if this it, is she was 100% very percent a way that I could die. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh man. That's a dream. Am I right? As long as Dean shows up after. Oh, <laughs> if Dean was my Reaper, I'd immediately walk into the light. <laughs> like, give me that scythe. <laughs> yeah, cut me down in my prime. <laughs> cut me in half. The feature music from this episode, Time Has Come Today by the Chamber Brothers. Oh, God. I, if I was thinking I love myself today, like the Biff Naked song. <laughs> Wow, super Canadian very reference. Very specific reference. From a very specific time, probably around the same time period. Probably around there. Yeah. Was, you know, the big shiny kind of era. Yeah. 
again, super. We have that new fan from Kitchener. They'll know what we're uh, talking yeah. about. Yeah, hey Kitchener. You know yeah, what's up? you 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 know Biff. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop Biff. Gotta stop. <laughs> uh, we have Shambhala by Three Dog Night. Okay. Do that to me one more time. By, by Britney Spears. The Captain and Tennille. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Not hit me, baby, one more time. Sure. Did you watch that documentary yet? <sighs> I, uh, that's why I'm thinking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's it's heartbreaking. I, yeah. I I 100% became a Britney Spears fan in, in a different way than when I, when I was a teenager. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Chris Crocker was right the whole time. Right? <sighs> Who would have thought? Betty, maybe, but Chris? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm punchy this morning. I don't know. I've been I feel like you're really high energy this morning and I'm barely awake. Yeah. Which will change in a second when I'm terrified of a clown. Say, but... Time to wake up, sheeple. <laughs> <laughs> Weird turn partway through the episode. <laughs> this is my truther cast. <laughs> clown truther. Yeah. They're real and they're out there to get you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, silly string doesn't burn at that temperature. <laughs> yeah. Why do we always turn these into that? <laughs> the final song is Mud Walk by Bad Poodle. Okay. All right. What a weird name. Yeah. So, <clears throat> before getting into our thoughts on today's episode, let's open up Dad's journal and learn some of the real-world lore about today's monster. That's right. Let's see what the lore says about Rakshasa. <laughs> Rakshasa. Rakshasa. Are, are you, do you have a clown thing, by the way? We didn't talk no, about this. No, no, I don't. I mean, I think they're generally creepy, but I also went to theater school. So, like, the thing that gets me about clowns is I'm like, that's not what a clown is. Oh. I'm like, clown is a specific art form. This birthday party bullshit is this, like, lowest common denominator kind of crap. Oh, and I've... I get more, like, angry about what people think of clowns than I get scared of the idea of clowns. I you were... But I do think they're creepy. I thought you were scared for them. You're like, you have no idea how few job opportunities there are for you. What oh, are you doing? I mean, there's that, too. But it's like, what, like... This this isn't Buffon. You're not an Auguste. What are you doing? I get like I get like theater nerd about clowns more than I get terrified. This is the of this them. is the the equivalent of the performing arts for art history degrees. That's what this is. It's like a birthday clown compared to like the study of clown is like eating uh, like mac and cheese versus like going to culinary school. It's funny. <laughs> it's like like that's the difference, and that that's the. Th- that's my thing with clowns. Is I'm just like, that's not a clown. I just get really like, really fucking elitist about it, <laughs> which is so stupid. That doesn't surprise you. Know, somebody who went to school for theater has a weird opinion about a, a strange a art form. A very specific art form, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a very weird history with clowns. Oh, no. Is this pl- podcast safe? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, I would say. Okay. If the audio cuts very quickly, then you at home, you know what happened here. <laughs> You can you can draw the the dots together. Yeah. So I was as a child very terrified of clowns. Sure. We had a clown show up at a birthday party when I was probably six I, yeah. or five, and he came up from the sewer. Yeah. Which a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to float too? <laughs> no. In it, hindsight, they shouldn't have staged it that way. No, it yeah. was probably a poor choice, especially because it was like around that time. It was like the nineties, like just covered in sewage. It was <laughs> really. <laughs> It was really popular there in both book and like film form. Oh, yeah, bad idea. No, it, uh, he was he had like water guns. Sure, and he kept shooting me in the face with a water gun. <laughs> it's a little aggressive. And I think he was drunk. I was. Uh, I talked to my uh, brother see, about it. That sucks. I talked to my brother about it in hindsight, and he was like, "Oh, that clown was definitely drunk." I I think part of the reason that, I mean, I mean, obviously part of the reason that clowns are deemed scary as the John Wayne Gacy kind of thing. Oh, is but what, also was he but also I clowning? think it's I think it's because that like birthday clown industry is this very kind of like low paying, low rent, desperate for work sort of industry and they kind of just take whoever walks in. So like the quality control's not there. So I think there's probably people that love that job and do a really good job of it. And then there's also people that are like I I just I need this and I could give a shit and like I think that kind of tarnishes the reputation of clowns so funny you say that Uh oh oh god so 
my mother knew I was afraid of clowns, right. but wanted me to get over it. So, so she hired John Wayne Gacy. So when I was like, I want to say 14. Oh, no. This is, too, I mean, A, too old for a clown. What about to be a clown? S- sorry, your mom, like, s- basically, like, signed you up to mm-hmm. be a clown as a form of, like, confrontation therapy? Sort of, yes. But also to get me a job. That's horrible. So I tra- That's so bad. I trained as a clown for like a month. I mean, you trained as a birthday clown. It's not the same as training as a clown. You didn't go to like Lecoq school in France. Or I anything. trained as a clown. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to be elitist about it. You? Uh, so you, you, like, <laughs> you actually trained and worked as a birthday clown. I never worked. Oh, okay. I quit at the end of a month. Because it's terrifying. Because it's terrifying and terrible and yeah. you make no money and I have to dress like a clown. Yeah. A birthday clown. Jesus. So I learned how to make poodles. Uh, I learned how to right, make a sword. B- balloon animals and stuff. Yeah. I learned how to walk with the big floppy shoes. <laughs> I love the, like, learned how. Like, it's... It was, I had to walk with a book did on my to, head and, yeah, like... Did you have to do, like, the the uh, police academy thing where you have to, like, climb a wall <laughs> with the big shoes and stuff like that? Or, like, crawl underneath with, like, honk, 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 honk. I learned how to break my spine and reform it so I could fit inside of a small vehicle. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I learned how to dislocate my L6. So I, <laughs> but yeah, I, I 100%. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know how we're this deep into a friendship and, and never I'm still learning up. about new jobs you've had. <laughs> it's a long list. But technically, I never had the job, which is, I think, partly why it never came sure, up. Sure, yeah. Yeah, because it was the worst. But I remember my mother being like, But you went I- through basic training. Yes. You could technically be drafted back into the clown army. <laughs> <laughs> I know I never took the formal They could they could ship you out to Clown Crimea. What war are we? <laughs> yeah. Clown Mia. <laughs> I never Cry I, Mama Mia. I never took the formal test at the end, so <laughs> So insane. So I so in some states I can perform clowning, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But other ones, you have to follow the specific. Yeah, you're one. not like a legally binding clown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's outrageous. Yeah, but I can I can still speak to clowning. <laughs> well, that's going to come in handy in this episode. You can point out what the clown is doing right or wrong. I assume what he's doing wrong is murdering these kids' parents. Actually, that's the right thing. That, that, oh. was, that was one of the first things you learned. <laughs> This is how you sneak into a child's bedroom at night. Make sure they invite you. Yeah. Yeah. This is how you make terrifying artwork once you're in prison. Good God. Crazy. I had no idea. <laughs> I know. I realized that while I was watching this. I'm like, I don't think I've ever told this story. Wild. Yeah. I mean, fucked up that that was how you were forced into that because you were afraid of it. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> So, Rakshasa. <laughs> uh, um, Rakasha, Rakasha. Oh, Rakasha. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay. So, Rakshasa are uh, creatures in Hindu mythology, although eventually they do also work their way into like um, like Buddhist mythology and some, some other things too. But so, uh, sort of a piece of Hindu myth. Mm-hmm. Um, the earliest mentions of them describe them as being consumers of raw flesh. Like specific, oh, yeah. specifically of the human variety. Um, so I'm, I don't know how often you say raw flesh and not referring to humans. <laughs> Man flesh. <laughs> Looks like meat's back on the menu, boy. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, um, the most dangerous game. <laughs> so, um, Okay, I, I'm not as familiar with Hindu mythology as I would like to be. Oh, really? So I, I'm Jeez. hoping that I get this right. What do they even teach you kids in school these it's, days? It's said that Rakshasa are a an kind of accidental creation of Brahma. And Brahma is this like <laughs> four-faced god that's sort of like a creator figure. And Not that, the two-faced and that god they, like my mother. That the Rakshasa are so ravenous that when they were created, they immediately began to consume Brahma. <laughs> and so oh. he shouted... Rakshama, which means protect me in Sanskrit, and Vishnu came to help him, and that's where the Rakshasas got their name. It's because it's close to Rakshama. Uh, um, that and seems v- like a lazy choice. And Vishnu banished them to Earth. Um, they might hunt cemeteries, hunt human flesh, 
drain cows of their milk, etc. Like not like, <laughs> oh. but like just magically kind of. Oh, uh, I just like the idea of it. It's just like <laughs> underneath. Like yeah, got to wash down all that man flesh. <laughs> Looks up, got milk. <laughs> yeah, that was the original ad. Yeah, um, <laughs> weird it didn't sell. Well, but I mean, if you think about it, I think, you know, like for like Hinduism and that aren't cows sacred, right? So anything yeah. that would like affect a cow like that is probably meant to come off as very demonic or something like that. Um, um, so some of the powers and abilities that they are said to have, they're shapeshifters. They could take any form of a person or anything like that. Um, some texts describe them as having like two kind of fangs and also like claws on their hands. Sometimes they have like fiery red eyes. Um, they could fly, go invisible, cast illusions, and they could take the form of any animal. He's a Superman of like fucking villains. Like a, more like a Martian Manhunter. Yeah. Uh, go check out the Dr. DC podcast. Um, uh, <laughs> they are... <laughs> They're said to be most powerful in the evening or in the dark or under a new moon. Uh, they could be dispelled by like sunlight, mm -hmm. sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, supposedly, not all Rakshasas craved human flesh. Uh, I think it's in the Mahabharata. There are depictions. Either you've got the taste for it or you don't. You know, it's one of those it's things. It's an acquired taste. It's like cilantro. It's an acquired taste. Yeah, it's a thing you need to get. I've acquired the taste. No. Um, there are depictions of both good and evil Rakshasa, although the majority are evil. I like the idea of this thing's got like claws and fangs. It's like, no, but I'm just a nice guy. Well, I think some of them, like, okay, well, I'll I'll, I'll get to it because there's okay. a couple of weird alternate interpretations. So. <laughs> I just like dressing up like a clown and, a clown and entertaining children. I'm I not like all li the other ones. I just like milk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, there are mentions of Rakshasas as like soldiers. Uh, so in the Ramayana, Rama, the hero of that story, fights uh, the this king called Ravana, who is the commander <gasps> of uh, the the uh, Rakshasas, and he's said to have like ten heads and twenty arms, which would be part of that shape shifting thing. Right? You get so much more milk. Uh, <laughs> Good lord. Um, so, alternate interpretations. Yeah. In in the Lotus Sutra <clears throat> in Buddhist mythology, it describes a group of female rakshasi who swear Rakshasi? To, that's the female form of the word is rakshasi. Oh. Um, they swear to uphold like the tenets of Buddhism or something. They're just these kind of pleasant rakshasi. Uh, and then there's, uh, I guess, a, a different ancient Indian religion called Jain Dharma that I'm probably mispronouncing. And in that one, the Rakshasa are described as like peaceful vegetarians. It's like the exact opposite of how they're described in like the Ramayana. And wow. Mahabharata. That seems like, but yeah, so we're talking about these crazy, powerful nighttime dwelling man, flesh eating, uh, shape shifting, illusion casting, flying, invisible monsters. Goodness and gracious. And I think in modern days, like the word Rakshasa or or a variant of it, like means monster in like Malay or like an, another language. Mm. Crazy. Wow. Wow. I wouldn't have thought. Pretty wild. Good luck falling asleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, I'm surprised you didn't do just killer clowns. No, because there's an actual monster. Yeah, fair. And it doesn't like it, I'm not like saving this one. Be like we got to get to that season fourteen Rakshasa episode <laughs> or something. Like fair, fair, <laughs> you know? true. Yeah, and it could get real dark if you just talked about clouds and like, killed people. Yeah, we can't. We can't. <laughs> I can't just do an episode on John Wayne Gacy. No, that's for our another podcast. <laughs> our true crime podcast. Yeah. Welcome to the Gacy Cast. Oh my God! Just no, no, we can't. Oh no. Yeah. It's just about his art. Yeah, you would critique like him as a birthday clown, and yeah. I would be like, he didn't study. And I would be, be like, but look the way that he pirouettes in this one video. I've got video of John a Wayne John Wayne Gacy, Gacy guest that overlooks the killing and eating people part of him, <laughs> which is just critiquing his clowning. Absolutely insane. Just we have guests on there, like, okay, but like, what about the kill? Sorry, what? We don't really cover that. Yeah. On this it's show. I, I mean that that we call that his blue period. <laughs> Jesus, let's get to the episode. This oh. is outrageous. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, let's jump into today's episode. I'm ready. Then, oh, I love that we got proper then and nows for uh, 
uh, for these episodes now. Love that. Right? We're, oh, this is yeah. like the show we know and love. This is the uh, we're, we're like in it now. Yeah. It's funny because when we were in season one, I was like, I swear to God, we like got this in season one. You would one. think, yeah. And then it's, now it's season two and we're like, oh, we've had it for most of the time. Yeah. We get the uh, right in this sort of then and now we get the time has come today is sort of the music that plays mm. along with this, which is which I love. I mean, yeah, it's so nice to hear actual classic rock with this show. Yeah, it's funny because like I think in my first few watch throughs, I didn't even pay that much attention to the music. And I think for now, now it's now that I'm aware of its intention and sort of through all the research that I've yeah. done, I, I pay a lot more attention to it. And it's it really does actually like frame it. It's so like subconscious that I didn't even realize that how much it actually helped the show. Do you think that it's because it's still early in the season that this then <laughs> sequence is so long? Like it's almost all of last episode <laughs> yeah. and a bunch of last season. Yeah, because in later seasons, they just are like, then like it's a couple shot, of shot, 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 shot from this like... Is like if just, we just we could have done last week's episode just watching this then. I mean, it's like, true. It's yeah, it goes element. through all of the. Sorry, it's still going. Wow, it's still go. It's it's literally just it's going scene by scene and just cutting the most important lines and putting them together. It's a crazy this long is a five minute episode. Yeah, now wow. now we get to now. Goodness it's gracious! Just the credits. It's just it's over. So we start at a. At Cooper Carnival in Medford, Wisconsin. I gotta say, as creepy as clowns are, I yeah. love myself like a fall fair, like a little midway kind of thing. I love the way that they do this wide angle shot with the clowns right from the beginning. So it feels it kind of looks feels, like a 90s rap video. But it, I mean, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> My name is, is Coco, and I'm here to say, like, they, honk, honk, honk. Yeah. The clowns are played by Puff Daddy and Mace. Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honking you. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Oh no! Uh, I, what I like it is like it warps yes. you, but also shows, shows you like the perspective of a child coming into it. Ugh! Just a clown, sad, standing by itself. Ugh! No, not it's, like this. It that like the waving at the kid. That then, authentic classic clown outfit. Yeah, and the kid goes, "Look, mom, another clown." And the parents look over, and then like there's no one there. The mom's like, "You're trying to scare your dad." Stop gaslighting me, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like your father. And then we cut to nighttime, and this family is going like, "How long were they at the fair?" Right? Because it's like nighttime. It's not evening. The it's clowns just in the road. Out. Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. Is I thought you didn't have a clown. I thing. don't. But it's just, I, it's the dread. Like, because as a society, we've now decided that clowns are terrifying, and especially out of context clowns. Like, it is a clown just like on a rural road is really unsettling. It is very funny that. Like clowns constantly have to keep coming out as like a group to be like, it is not the way that clowns are. Okay, that guy who killed all those people, where it and clown if it is not it's the way the clowns are. It's just a few bad apples. Yeah, that drunk clown that, that hashtag defund clowns. <laughs> I think they've been defunded enough as it is. No. Yeah, we, they defund need to stop being able to the buy way. all of those weird outfits and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're getting all those military surplus water balloons and stuff like that. Uh, it's the black market of clowning that we need to be concerned about. Yeah. You got to cut their legs out from underneath. They them. got all that polka dot body armor. <laughs> so we're we're at, now we're at this girl's oh. house. And the clown's outside and she sees it and she comes downstairs and lets it in, like holds its hand. Oh. It's Ugh. And you've got a house that your daughter could open up a door to a clown so easily. Could very easily. I Look, can't. We got our first new supernatural e opening. Yeah, we got our cool title card. You might notice that I used the colors from this title card in our new episode art. Yeah, I'm keeping it fresh every season. Wait a minute. I mean, by the time we're recording it, I haven't even seen that. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You don't do it. <laughs> I already did. I did it for last week's. So I made the season two. Oh, that's why it changed. Oh. It's the colors from the title card. This is actually the first time we see it, though. So we are now, uh, we assume that something bad happened with the clown. Of course, because how could it not? <laughs> and we go but to. But we don't get a blood spatter or anything. No, 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 no. Now we're at an unlocation. Sam and Dean stand beside each other as they watch their father's remains burn yeah. into ashes. Yeah, as they send him to Valhalla. 
Yes. That like hunter funeral thing where they make like the pyre. And it's, it is. Them. Because, you know, you don't want them coming back as a zombie or because they know about monsters, right? So you got to yeah. just like get rid of it. It's also you don't a, want a demon to take over the corpse or anything. Yeah, like no, that. it makes yeah. a lot of sense. I, I, I get why. They say that uh, John's funeral is shot in, as a visual reference to the end of Return of the Jedi when oh, Luke's sure. body is burned. Uh, so is that like where, or where not they, Luke, but Luke burns a body of his father? Is that where they like get the Big idea? Spoiler, t- Anakin Skywalker. What? <laughs> Little Annie? No. Hey, Annie. <laughs> oh, no, it's made his way into here. <laughs> no, Winchester is a rakshasa. <laughs> What's funny? He it- works in the Bobby's junkyard. <laughs> That's really funny. Get Watto in Bobby's junkyard. But it's interesting because so we have this moment of the the kids like the guys burning their yeah. father. This episode marks a very first appearance of what the crew of Supernatural affectionately called Jensen Ackles' one perfect tier. <laughs> yeah, the fandom sometimes calls it the single man tier as yeah. a reference to in in episode ten five fan fiction. Yes, when Sam and Dean are burning John's body, Sam is full on crying, tears streaming down his face. Big surprise. Yeah, whereas Dean is handling it more stoically until just before the scene fades out, when a single tear. It's because he's he's holding his eye muscles so tight that only one tear can make it through that's right it's like a wall of no emotion oh god i just want to fix him (laughs) just like how he's fixing this impala uh but uh jensen jokes that for some reason it's usually just one tear and the focus puller gets excited and tends to focus right in on that leaky eye indeed uh the solitary tear tends to be the way that dean cries typically because it escapes while he's trying to hold his emotions with a few notable exceptions i mean it works great i mean the idea of crying on command i mean as i'm not a good actor like i i went to theater school i did some stuff but it's like fortunate. I, could, I could never get myself there i'm not like i guess emotionally open enough or whatever as an actor to like just make myself cry it's just i mean the, i think your secret is that you're always crying it's pulling back that's what you have to do <laughs> right yeah <laughs> they're like it's actually too much <laughs> yeah no i mean it's just for all of the regular scenes you're actually you're the you're not trying to force yourself to cry you're actually forcing yourself not to cry yes it's actually more impressive right crying is finally you get to release yeah which i can't a sweet release it is. Uh, so we're in Bobby's scrapyard a week later after the funeral. I, here's the thing I like about this show. I yeah. mean, other shows have continuity and stuff too, but this show is very much like, we can't just like cut to a week later and they've got the Impala back. No. Like, another show might do that. They'd be totally. like, I fixed it up while you were in the hospital. They, they would just like say something that. like that. But in this, it's like, no, no, no. Dean's going to do it by hand slowly it's also kind of part of his grieving process like the, him he and sam are talking about their dad and dad's yep. research and all this kind of stuff and uh eventually sam says like there's this thing we should look into and then he's like we should ask bobby for one of his cars well yeah exactly <laughs> they, <but> it's, <coughs> so they find uh they, they find a voicemail message yeah. on one of their dad's old cell phones yes. that's four months old from a woman named ellen saying hey john it's ellen look don't be stubborn you know i can help you call me so they decide to go to this place and this person ellen they don't know if this it's is a our job they this don't is know. our first trip to harvell's roadhouse that's right we get to the roadhouse it looks pretty rough rougher than i remember it yeah me too i was gonna say the same thing <laughs> like it looks abandoned because i guess they're going when it's not open but it like, is the middle of the day yeah yeah yeah. like midday too probably like 11 or clo- 11 o'clock or something but sam is uh, is able to trace an email from uh, uh, an address from the number which leads them to this roadhouse so they they start exploring around and and find this guy sort of like laying on a pool table and they're like I don't know. <laughs> they're like i think he's like completely passed out they're like i guess that isn't ellen yeah he's got a rock and mullet i mean yeah you can even tell this guy looks like he belongs in this place. He for looks sure. like he should be sleeping on the pool table. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it 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 totally adds up. I I I love the look of this place. It feels yeah. like what a bar, like I somebody who's worked in bars in yeah. the past. This is what bars feel like in the middle of the afternoon. It's very weird. Oh yeah, it's uncomfortable and bad and everything. And as sort of they're looking around, suddenly Dean hears a gun cock and uh, a, a weapon pushed up against his back. Yeah the uh suddenly he's just like you probably shouldn't hold that gun so close to me because then i can do this flips around and grabs the thing gun that always makes me laugh okay that moment is great because he does the thing where it's like 
huh, and he like reverses yeah. it. And he's like, ha, and she immediately hits him in the face and takes it back. Yeah. It's, 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 he's too that's cocky. A great Dean moment. Yeah, because he's so confident uh, that he's he's got this situation under control. Yeah, and then this woman, uh, Ellen, comes out and, and she hears them talking say, about saying Sam like and Dean. saying each other's names. She's yeah. like, Sam and Dean, like Winchester? You're John Winchester's boys? And then, and then. Guns immediately down, and she's like, "Hey, welcome. Yeah, this, uh, I'm Ellen. This is my daughter, Joe. the The rifle that Joe threatens Dean with when the brothers first enter is a model ninety four thirty thirty Winchester repeating rifle. A little nod to the guys if you know your weapons. Gotcha. So, I do not. So thank you. Neither do I. I read it online. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, she basically says like, "Hey, like we we know your dad." We, uh, th- this is a place for like hunters, and they're like, Wait, hunters like all come here because they still don't really know that there's like a collection and collective of hunters, or they might know it because it, I mean, they, they know there's a few out there, but they don't know that like there's like a place where they can go, yeah. So, but basically, Ellen is like, Did your dad catch that demon? I know he was close on the trail and stuff like this. And they're like, and... How, who are you? Yeah, and they're like, Well, w- at one time we called John family, and he's just like, Dean says something really shitty, like, he never mentioned you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is a really shitty thing to yeah, say. Yeah, Dean's being crappy, and then it eventually comes out that John's, uh, John's dead. Like Ellen yeah. kind of pieces it together. They don't say it, but uh, they do mention that she, she figures it out. They do mention that there's a guy named Ash that that could help them find this demon, yeah. which is interesting. But I think you you slowly realize that like Joe finds out or Ellen finds out that. That the demon is what killed John. Yeah. Like they have to sort of go through it, and Dean's. You can already tell Dean to like doesn't want to talk about it. Well, no, he's. I mean, he's being more standoffish than even a usual Dean. Yeah, because yeah. he hasn't hit on that girl once. No, for and this is he still, hasn't tried to lay any pipe. <laughs> yeah, none. He had, no douchebag Dean has come out in season no. two yet. Really. A yeah. little bit in the previous episode, but not really because he was dealing with being, you know, dead. Yes, exactly. And then um, they say, we need to find Ash. Who's Ash? Ellen goes, Ash. And uh, mullet guy from the pool yeah. table <laughs> wakes up. And uh, I love Ash so much. And he's like a genius. He's like a tech genius. He's like a whiz kid. But he's just, he looks so rough <laughs> as as dean describes him, he looks like a, a roadie for leonard skinner <laughs> yeah yeah which which ash is just like i like you <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the look i was going so for dean hands over i think this is all like notes and stuff from john like john's journal yeah or about from other sort of things. all of the demon and stuff and ash is immediately like whoa how did like there's no way anybody could get this kind of information about a demon like this uh, like who no one could hunt a demon like this and they're like uh my my daddy can yeah my dad's cool our dad is the our dad could beat up your dad if he wasn't dead yeah (laughs) (laughs) my daddy's the best oh don't say it like that my daddy's dead oh no (laughs) my daddy my daddy's a stiff now Oh, oh no! <laughs> this is crossing into. This is worse than the clown. This is. My... Oh no! So <laughs> yeah, Ash says I. I can't remember what the setup is, but he says something like, "You ever been struck by lightning? It ain't fun." You're like, I like this guy. You're also like, wait, you've been struck by lightning? <laughs> yeah, anyway, that explains a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think he says, "Give me fifty-one hours with this information." Which he, is like, he like so looks at, he like thinks it for a minute, and then says a very specific number. Yeah, which I love. I think that's awesome. So that it, he is going to go off and work on the stuff a bit. The demon. We finally get an ass shot of Joe. Thank and, you, and Joe. Thank you, Dean. I looked. She is twenty-one <laughs> uh, uh, as of the filming of this. Good. Because I was I was slightly concerned that Dean was into her. I was slightly concerned that I was into her. So right. I looked it up. She's actually two years older than us, too. Right, right. This is how that would work out. Yes, you're right. Smart. Good. <laughs> Safe. Good. I mean, still 21. I mean, it's a very leery shot. Like, that one shot is like it starts on her ass. And then it cuts to Dean. You're like, oh, we were Dean for a second. I get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. They did to us what he's doing to her. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, yeah, Dean tries to kind of uh, 
apologize because I guess maybe they had met before, like when she was really little, or yeah, I, potentially maybe I don't think so. Or, or uh, uh, it, her dad comes up because I guess her dad is because her dad right died. Yeah. yeah, basically because they 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 make some mention of her father. She said her father uh, father's dead and Dean's dad's dead, so they're having a dead dad club. Yeah, and Dean's like, I got fifty one hours to waste. So he finally, and makes... then he and he like lets the sentence go because yeah. I guess normally that's where they just go like, yeah, all right, and she doesn't do anything, and he goes. Do you know what? Never mind. <laughs> like he and, well, she makes a comment like, "Oh, I expected like a cheesy pickup line." Most of the guys that come through here that are hunters think that they can get yeah. in my pants by just like uh, track four from like or no like a ch- uh, the beginning yeah. of Leonard uh, of uh, Led, Led Zeppelin, Zeppelin four. four. Yeah, and, so I mean, like and, she knows her music. You can tell like Dean's like tick, like, but he's also like. <laughs> it's exactly what he would normally do. Yes. That's not. That's not how I do it. Yeah, that's not. Uh, no i wouldn't and then he realizes that you get a lot of information there because it's like she knows her music she knows hunters he is just like every other hunter dude yeah he that's not the way to get through to her yeah which is like piquing his interest a lot i i like their dynamic a lot yes yeah totally uh sam uh, and uh he's looking over some like info that ellen has about the murders not far from the impala now we're no, they're not they're in the shitty minivan oh yeah that's right sorry the The the, minivan with the wood paneling yes That's right. The the Van Paul looks like an old school like Plymouth Voyager, or like a a hundred percent Dutch caravan or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, absolutely. I've definitely was in a few of those. As well. Um, I mean, don't say it like that. I was just in a few of those as a kid. I was tossed into a few of those. As a don't kid. say it like that. I remember being blindfolded in the back no. of a few. Of those. Good God! <laughs> so they're on their way. I mean, presumably to the town where the. The clown thing is. Yeah, because um, Sam was sitting at the bar and noticed that there was like a folder full of all of this clown, like full of all this murder stuff. So he asks what it was and Joe a bit, it basically tells and, him. And it's tied to this. Ellen says and it's, it's tied to this circus, murder. this Bunker Brothers circus. Um, um, what a great and, name and they're for a trying circus. To, they're trying to think through it. They're like, how how would this happen? Yeah. And they're like, is it a cursed object that it moves with the circus? Yeah. Or like... Like, is is this paranormal even trying to uh, figure this out that, you know, they get to the brother talk about like, well, we just we need, need this job. We got to get our mojo back. We got to take our mind off dad. And the well, Sam and specifically like says it's because uh, Jensen, uh, uh, Dean is basically like, well, like why? Like, I figured you'd want to go after the demon instead of this. And Sam goes, well, this is what dad would have wanted us to do the job. Yeah. And Dean's just like dad would have wanted us to do like this is not the way that sam talks i know that's a turn for sam yeah suddenly it's it's about what his father wants and it's a very weird perspective so now we we zoom out to uh, the the fun house at and the why Cooper is it Carnival. at night i mean kind of at night but the, oh god i hate this <laughs> it's this kid who like couldn't care we're and, inside and of his, this fun house and his dad the kid's like looking at his ipad or whatever the dad's like look isn't this creepy and the kid's like oh, i could give shit <laughs> there's <laughs> a there's a there's a ghost with yellow eyes which, which is a fun nod to his uh. azel it's the first thing you see in there this kid's playing a video game and oh, basically no, like doesn't no, give a shit there's a clown in the reflection don't look at a kid <laughs> <sighs> I've never seen you so upset by an episode. Just because kids are kind of just naturally creepy anyway. The idea of them, like it's, it's also not... this dad has like very you vibes. He's just like, hey, isn't this fun? Ooh, I'm scared. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's very much you and your daughter at a carnival, which I could understand might be terrifying that your daughter's going to bring a clown and home. And this stupid ass dad saying, "Don't be afraid of clowns; they're your friends." You wouldn't say that. No, you'd be like, "No, that I would say a clown friend. is a serious art form." <laughs> you'd be lucky to be a clown yeah. if you could muster the energy and the yeah. Do courage you have it in you to be a clown. <laughs> You'll never Can have you what it rise takes. to the occasion of being a clown. We cut to the morning back at uh, at home, and the dad's it's waking awful. up, and the kid's like, "You're right, dad. He is my friend." And the it's dad's like, "What?" Awful. And the kid's smiling, real creepy, and the dad just sees the kid holding this clown's hand. Oh God, that clown's like empty fucking Joker face. So terrifying. This this second house is also. Uh, the same exact house that used to be on the uh, the the show Step by Step from 1991. Weird detail. <laughs> Starring Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Somers. Weird detail. So again, we cut away. Also, no blood spatter. Yeah, we don't actually see like the clown like open its mouth or I take wonder, a knife out. Like it's just. I wonder what that's about. I wonder if that has something to do with maybe 
like like this, this big clown was like you can show clowns but you can't show them actually murdering Sorry, people. So you think it's like the like the clown industry? Yeah. Well, got it's involved. weird that they haven't like they always Listen, show that. If the faith healing industry couldn't get involved, there's no way the clown industry is powerful enough. No, I think big clown came down yeah. on them. We got silly people in high places. <laughs> Something about this tastes funny to me. I think you need to remove these shots. Uh, um, so now the guys are at the car. Sam the says day. something like, these people were ripped to uh, shreds. Yeah. There was a kid there. And then Sam says he fingered a clown. He means like he said the clown did it. <laughs> oh, yeah. But Dean gives him a look like, Ugh. Which is very funny. They don't actually like go into they it. They never say it, but they're like... Like Jesus, Sam. <laughs> it's very funny because it, it's like it's such an offhand joke that you have to. Do, you have to. There's a few steps to get there yourself. Yeah, you kind of wonder like why you'd bother. Uh, so the guys are at the carnival. They go uh, to uh, like talk to I guess the guy that runs the carnival or whatever. And uh, there's a blind guy throwing knives at the. Well, yeah, they're looking around. Yeah, they're trying to figure out sort of like what can we pull from this area that's going to be potentially paranormal. And they they walk into this random tent and find yeah find a blind knife thrower, which I love. That. Yeah, Dean says, "Have you seen Mister <laughs> Cooper?" And the guy's like, <sighs> takes his glasses off. He's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" He's like, "I just thought you were cool. I'm sorry." And then and then this other guy comes in and he goes, uh, "Is there a problem here?" And the guy's like, "This guy hates blind people." He's like, "No, I don't." <laughs> like, like Dean is just fully foot in mouth right now, which is very funny. I, I I think it's amazing. Uh, but these guys realize basically that like... Do they say that they want to join the circus? Yeah, because they realize that if they were going to scan that entire place, it would, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah. So they decide if they get a job there, it'll be easier to sort of like suss everybody out. So they meet with the kind of owner and they start talking about like, oh, that they've worked on some carnivals before and like... Uh, and the guy's like, "Oh, what are you then? Ride jockeys, butchers? Like, what do you do?" And they're like, e "Yeah, yeah, yeah. E I'm not." He just like he names like a bunch of positions, like like these very like inside terms. And, yeah, and Sam's like, "Yeah, a little bit of everything." And the guy goes, "You've never done this before." And they're like, "No, but we just really want work." I, I always love that Winchester move of like try to lie. Guy yeah. sees through the lie, and then you kind of twist the lie. Yes. Like they they don't actually need the work, but they admit to having lied a little bit yeah. so that it in a weird way it, it works out kind of like clears them of whatever the other mission is exactly like, i i love that move but the, I, the guy seems really protective he's like this is the carnival has always been a bastion for like freaks and like, yeah the, the, the degenerates and blah 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 blah, well, blah. It's not he doesn't say degenerates he says like it's people scum that, of the earth that's people what that feel like out, good lord people that feel like outcasts or whatever yeah it's like a refuge so he's just like you and he clearly like he's like you guys are too pretty to be doing this and they're like we want to be part of this but it's also kind of speaking to them because they're like we're outcasts yeah. <laughs> like, there's a part of them like should we run away and join the circus <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah that was never a feeling for me I never wanted to do that no I know that's such a very cliche thing but I'm also not sure I ever saw a circus come to town no in Ontario, did you ever have a circus come to town? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't think a circus ever came to town. We had like some midway. For my family called them family reunions. <laughs> we had we had some midway things come in, like those small rides and like the carnival games, but never like the three ring circus kind of thing where it I was never like went a bear on a, a beach ball kind of thing. They, like, they've had them. They're, there's such strict rules in Canada that you don't really get the like classic. Yeah, because carnivals. it's fully like animal cruelty and people cruelty. and kind of people cruelty yeah less important but still yeah more important animal cruelty yeah bad so the guys basically are like hey after they have this sort of interview because sam goes like hey like i i i, I never wanted to go to college anyways like i just want to do this circus thing and so when the guys get outside dean's like were you actually serious like do you do not do you not want to go back to college when he and and dean brings up the like and doing what dad wants us to do like who are you yeah you know? Like, it's ridiculous because, again, Sam is just like, Deb would have wanted me to continue to do this. It's like so not the way that we Sam got a little shot all. of the the scrambler there. Do you remember yeah. that ride? Scrambler. What's your favorite carnival ride? Uh, that one's up there. I always liked the um, the Matterhorn. Oh. Is that the one where you're on the outside and it spins you? Oh, and I you can't. go, do you want to go faster? And you go, no. And he goes, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
I like the the polar expressy one. Oh yeah, that sure. one and the big boat. Those are my two. Big boats, favorite. ton of fun. Yeah, and always a, the big wheel, like a Ferris like, wheel. Yeah, yeah, classic. Ferris wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always want to do that. Yeah, that's a classic sort of high school date kind of thing. It's yes. like you want to sit on the baby wheel, get stuck at the top. <laughs> 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 Five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna hold your hand, but I got nervous. It's a little too real for me there. Well, where, how did you plate that clip from, from me in high school? Yeah, or on your me, yeah. iPhone. What's going on? So Sam and Dean are now working there. They got the jackets and that. Sam goes to check out the fun house. Uh, and he's wandering through. Which I like to call the not so fun house because people get married. I, they didn't get murdered there. They got murdered in their own home, which yeah, is scarier. Really- yeah, this is the not so fun house. Yeah, where we are right now recording. <laughs> oh God! Uh, yeah, you invited me in. <laughs> I was a clown the whole time. <gasps> uh, Sam saved busts him. out the EMF meter, and he's like, eh. not really seeing anything. Like yeah. the place it doesn't seem to be supernatural because they still think there's an object. They're still trying to find an object. I want one of those jackets. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're. Okay, Sam says he saw a skeleton, like a real human skeleton, and uh, he's he's saying, "What if it's uh, not like Attached a cursed object? Remains. What if it's remains, and then the remains travel with the circus?" Yep. That would explain how this paranormal thing is getting from place to place, getting into homes and stuff. Suddenly, Dean gets grabbed in the arm by the blind guy. Yeah, he's like, and "Why are you talking about skeletons? Like, what's going on? Yeah, what's EMF? Yeah." And Dean goes, "Your blind man hearing is out of control." <laughs> This is very funny. And and there's sort of this kind of like circus family kind of vibe. The guy's like, listen, I don't know what you want or who you are, but we don't trust newcomers. I yeah. don't know what you're talking about, but like, what's going on here? And Dean's like, do you believe in ghosts? And Dean actually kind of like, he almost gives it up, but he goes, we're writing a book about them. Yeah. So he's like, listen, we're like, we're kind of investigating ghosts kind yeah. of thing, just to throw the guy off the scent a little bit. But they see a kid say like look mommy there's a clown and, and there's the, no clown and there. the parent is like there's no clown so they're like oh shit uh oh this seems like this seems like our kind of job yeah <laughs> they just take guns out at the carnival <laughs> 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 so we finally found a way to put salt in these like high capacity magazines <laughs> just, 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 ghost <laughs> uzi oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so they follow the this family to their house because they're like it's not going to happen here at the carnival. Yeah, they they go back to their house. So they pull up outside of the this family's house. Uh, yeah, Dean is saying that like Mr. Cooper, uh, before he had his own carnival, they used to work co- for that Bunker Brothers one, the one that like where there was a murder in the eighties yeah. or whatever. They learned that from hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah. <gasps> <gasps> oh my god. Um. <laughs> This is a small gripe, but have you ever just noticed a car parked with people in it outside your house? Like, if there's just a car parked outside my house, I'm like, who's there? I know, I know, you would never like just stay at the window and look, but I feel like if I just saw someone sitting outside and then I walked by the window later and they were still just sitting in their car, I'd have called the cops by now. Like the stakeout kind of thing that they do, I feel like would blow up more. So we see the kid let the clown in. So messed I like up. the clown closes the door behind it. Very polite. Very polite. Yeah. Um, you it's, know. The, it's the right He's thing to do. He's been invited in. Be a that, good guest. But that's one of those things that a lot of shows do. Where Dean people, and Sam are already in the house. Yeah, which I didn't see that happen. Um, and they, they blast. They blow the clown away. The girl is screaming. Um, the, clown the clown just gets yeah. it back up. Like the clown as gets the, right back up. Because it doesn't dissipate. But it does kind of disappear when it like jumps, jumps out the, the door, window. jumps through the glass. Yeah, close the door behind <laughs> you, but then jumps through the window. And then the woman light. comes downstairs and what are you doing to my daughter? And there's these two guys with guns in their house. And then the, A broken and then the kid's like, they shot the clown. So the very next shot is them like changing the license plate, ditching the car. like, Which is funny because they're like... They make a comment like, oh, we don't want to take a chance because the, maybe the kids saw... Or like somebody saw our license plate, which I'm like... That never was occurred to you with the Impala. 
Yeah. I think they just wanted to get rid of his van. I well, think even Dean says, I hated this thing. Yeah. Like, I think it didn't have anything It's funny they to borrow it. it from Bobby and just, just immediately ab- leave it in, a, abandon it in a forest somewhere. Yeah. So funny. Dean's super pissed off. Reiterate, uh, reiterates again that he's okay because Sam's just like, seriously, like, what's going on with you? Yeah. They can't figure anything out. They don't see anything in Dad's journal. They're going to maybe check in with Ellen to see if they, they know anything about this kind of monster. And then Sam's like, do you think Dad and Ellen like, yeah. had a thing? Because Ellen earlier had said, like, for a while, he was kind of like part of the family. Yeah. And then they're like, do you think that's... Uh... And then you kind of get like a, should Dean have been hitting on? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that does... Yeah, that, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting because now they're having this conversation of like why Dean's being so weird and quiet. And and Dean shoots back. It's like, like I find it weird that you've spent your entire life fighting with our dad. And now suddenly you want to do what he thinks, like what you think dad would want uh, you to do. Like it's, it's, and he makes a comment that's rough, which is like, it's too little too late. Yeah. And I mean, listen, also, I mean, Sam is trying to push Dean to deal with. Yeah. The grief or whatever. Yeah. And, I get it because we also, we know Dean. We know he's not dealing with it. Oh, I know Dean. But also the idea of like pushing someone to deal with it the way you think they should deal with it is like also not good. Like Sam is also not helping. It's like like he's kind of got to take Dean's word for it that he's okay, even when he's not. It's like telling somebody to calm down. Are you not supposed to do that? (laughs) It's actually the the opposite of what you should be doing. Oh. You should tell them to fucking freak out. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you freak out? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm gonna calm down. Yeah, like a freak on a leash. It's called reverse psychology. I'm a genius. Inventing <laughs> it right now. So <laughs> they they call Ellen, and basically her best guess would be that it's a rakshasa. Yeah, uh, a race of Hindu creatures that take on human form and feed on flesh. A rakshasa featured in the 1974 TV series, The Night Stalker, the predecessor Ooh. to both X-Files and Supernatural. Interesting. So it was cool. sort of a very similar thing. So it's kind of their nod to that. So the ad, the added kind of lore they throw in the yeah. show is that Rakshasas live in squalor. There's like insects and stuff. Sleeping on a bed of dead insects. And that they have a slow metabolism. So like every 20 to 30 years, they got to feed, right? And that's why there's this big gap. Because there's a murder murders. from the 1981 Bunker Brothers Circus. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that that's some of the show throwing its own stuff in there, but they do say they could go invisible, they feed on human flesh, they're uh, ancient Hindu creatures, yeah. like they, they... But there is a way to kill it by using a dagger of pure brass. Yeah, which is possibly in, like, the Ramayana or Mahabharata or something like that, but I didn't see it. No. But it, it might be in there somewhere. It could be an actual thing. But for their sort of, they're trying to figure out, well... With that huge gap, who could it have been? And they were like, oh, it must be the owner, Jay Cooper. It's got to be Cooper. He's the only person we could tie to that former circus and this one. He's old enough. It's got to be him. Exactly. So we go back to the carnival and the, and the, we're sort of in the like where the, all the RVs are. Yeah. That everybody lives. Yeah. Like the, the, the RV town. Yeah. And yeah. Sam's going to go look at, at Cooper's place to see if he's got that bed full of insects and Dean's going to visit the blind knife thrower they met earlier, thinking that he might have the knife of brass. He might have a brass one. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. The knife of brass. You just made that sound like it was some like Lord of the Rings shit. Thou is knife yeah. of brass. And Duriel, knife of brass. D- I mean, dagger of brass sounds more I mean, that's Lord of the cool. Rings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm mean, brass is kind of like a low metal. That's like the that's like your level two kind of dagger. Not when you get to like level fifty. I you don't got a brass dagger at that point. No, that's that's very true. No. I saw you got, I, like a, uh, you got like a dagger of Western ass or something. Like that. I saw a Reddit name the other day that was Gay Lord of the Rings. And I was like, that's that's a pretty good name. I mean, you could just Lord of the Rings is like what are you talking about a collection intensely of intensely homoerotic or? in the way that Supernatural also is also by the, the way, way. Uh, the knife guy uh, turns invisible and throws knives at Dean I didn't know that was a knife thrower thing yeah they can all turn invisible yeah that's actually um, they don't actually throw the knives they just turn it invisible and walk the knife so, over so uh, Sam is like uh, uh, Cooper didn't like me snooping around Dean's like it's the blind guy <laughs> like, like what do you have against blind people jeez like, holy shit Dean you really gotta work through your shit yeah like this is they run into the fun house um, they're called differently able Dean 
But yeah, so now and then, they're like something yeah. closes and separates them. So they're like they're both trapped in this like kind of ultraviolet uh uh, maze but it's also the worst thing you could do because they're actually painfully codependent and now you separated them it's worse than killing them yeah it's like uh it's like separating someone from their familiar in yes. like the his dark materials <laughs> thing it's like the, the weird experiment have, kind of thing have you read that yeah it gets insane it, that book is right up my alley they, they, killed, they god. killed god yeah yeah, yeah it's insane <laughs> I, I i haven't watched the show yet i'm really interested yeah i need to watch that so now they're in the fun house they're, tr- uh, they're trying to find the rakshasa however it, it's it's made itself invisible and starts throwing knives at them oh yeah sam finds like a an organ. pipe organ yeah. kind of thing and he's like oh this is probably brass i mean <laughs> he's trying to break off very a, lucky to trying to break off a pipe i mean i'd like wish dean would break off some pipe he didn't break off any pipe earlier, so yeah. Sam has to do it for him because they're brothers. They break off pipe for each other. <laughs> if this was like a worse or more dirtbag show, there would be a line in there. Oh, yeah. Um, they can't see the thing because it's invisible. So Sam or Dean, so- someone turns like a valve and some steam starts yes. like entering the room so that they can try and see it in the mist. And Sam stabs it. It's a pretty cool effect. Yeah. It's a decent effect of this sort of invisible thing. You see its For eyes. 2006. You see it in the mist and it kind of falls down and you, there's blood like around the invisible wound. It's not a bad effect, I would say. I mean, it's a, it's, <coughs> my guess is it's just one of those green like bodysuit things, but it's still like, it's. Oh yeah, how they did it. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. But still, for like 2006 that. on a CW show, it was impressive. I, 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 I like it. So the Rakshasa is screaming as it decomposes into a pile of dust. Yeah. So we're not getting a crazy like sucked into hell uh, no. animation or anything like that. <laughs> no, nothing like that. So we're back at the roadhouse. Ellen is very pleased with the boys' work on the case. Yeah, it kind of. She kind of has the like police chief sort of feel to her, where it's like you did good work today. Yeah. Yeah. But look at these damages. The mayor's yeah. going to have my head for this. You two deserve each other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your rock salt and your Impala on my desk. I was going to say, your FBI badge and your stake. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Joe. But, but at, uh, yeah, do they, basically now you're getting that like Joe and Dean moment where she's finally like, oh, I'm surprised. Are you gonna, am I going to see you again? Yeah. I heard Sam broke off some pipe. Do uh. you want to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I got these two guys up in Canada. Dean is weirdly open here. He says, normally, I'd be fully hitting on you, uh, but I, I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I mean, normally, you'd call me the plumber, the, all the pipe I'm going to But lay. normally, when I'm hitting on someone, I'm thinking about my dad. And now, that just makes me sad for some reason. I guess I got to think about my brother. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Ash comes in. And he's like, where you guys been? I've been waiting for you. And he's... Uh, He's like, we were working a job, and Dean goes, you got something for us, Ash? And <laughs> Ash has this insane oh computer. It's just like wires and stuff all like exposed. It's like he just built it out of shit, yeah. like, like a ham radio and stuff like that. It's I love got, it. He makes a line that says- It's got like Gilligan's a, Island vibes. He makes a line like a divi- like divine on dog do- dookie, which is a nod to the movie Pink Flamingos from 1972. So uh, he has rigged up basically- a computerized system to track all those things John had talked about that were demon signs. Yes. Like the weird temperature lightning drops, uh, lightning, uh, like storms. electrical storms, yeah. uh, cattle deaths, things like that. He says, if those things line up, this thing will go off. We got a demon alarm, baby. Oh, yeah. Really cool. They're, and I love it because they're just like, how did you possibly, like, how could you possibly have done this? And he says, oh, I went to MIT, but I got kicked out before uh, because I was fighting. Which uh, <laughs> which is interesting because this is the second time that he's played a character that has been uh, to MIT and left. Oh, really? The Fast and the Furious 2001, oh, it, which, could be, shit. which could be a direct reference to that character. He's in the Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That was 2001, the first one? Listen, s- sorry. I, I'm try- I try not to be a creep on this show, but as I'm getting like older i'm in my 30s oh, no. i don't watch this show now and go like oh man i give it to joe i, oh. I watch this show and i go like ellen could get it right i'm like kind of into it right a hundred percent that's definitely how i watch this show i either want i either want dean 
or I want a I want a mother who's t- responsible and yeah. has a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Had some experience. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Knows a raider on a shotgun. Says, says so much about me, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we get some more like Verge of Man Tears things at the end here. They're back at Bobby's place. They're just talking about being sad. Sam says he feels guilty. All this kind of stuff. And Sam, you know, <coughs> not not bad little acting moment, actually. Out yeah. Of, out of Jared. Here. Yeah. Uh, Jared, Took a few cues off Jared Jensen. is a fine actor, but sometimes they always pick the take where he's overplaying it or something like that this is a pretty good well the project jared is- sad moment like because he's kind of doing the dean thing of trying to hold it together and it plays really because well i think i think he constantly has to juxtapose jensen who right who's always sort of slightly underplaying it uh now he's showing no emotion so it gives sam the ability to show just a little bit less yeah it, 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 and it, it looks uh, like maybe dean's okay it plays well yeah and then dean starts smashing up the impala when sam he's, leaves uh, because he's got all this. Because he's not up. okay. Yes. Big surprise. His dad. If you dies, can imagine. His biggest hero and the person who's given him all of his instructions in the entire life is not there. And it's symbolic. He got the car from John too, right? So now you he know? starts destroying the trunk of the car. Yeah. Which yeah, is like a like, direct correlation to, th- like, his the job he does because that's where they get all their weapons from. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's a direct it's correlation. A good, good little moment. A little. I mean, it's not two on the nose but it's a nice sort of simple metaphor we don't have to dig through too many layers to get there which i mean for a show like this you would never expect a simple metaphor no well i mean or you would expect too simple a metaphor i actually think this sort of last moment with them and stuff plays really oh god i just got a glimpse of the next episode i'm so excited (laughs) so excited in memory so at the the, the ending card here in memory of our friend peter ellis who directed the the two episodes in season one, Bloody Mary and the Benders. Oh, yeah, isn't oh, that that's heartbreaking? So, that's so sad. I yeah. know. What did, and, and to do it on this episode too? Jesus. Yeah. God. Well. Yeah. Oh, jeez, Louise. He must have just passed away when they oh, were that, editing it. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. So well, there you go. What a sad way to end it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the episode itself ends on kind of this sad note. Like we. It's we a had, long we shot had of the Dean. scene with like we could track the demon. You're like fuck yeah, and then we have this like we're not okay. Like they're pretty much falling apart. But which is interesting because it's actually a positive note because J- Dean finally let go of some of that anger. Yes, but it's it's this sort of melancholy kind yes. of thing. It's um yeah, that's right where I live, baby. <laughs> oh God, yeah, right between a fruit and a dog. That's that's right where I want to be. How dare you? What I don't understand. You like that Smashing Pumpkins album? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually do. That was one of the first it's albums I album. bought. I, Good I, album, I yeah. love that album. Uh, all right. Let's talk about our reviews of this episode. All right. I I think the monstery parts of this yeah. get back to a thing I like. They oh, yeah. pick a monster that I would imagine a largely American audience is not f- overly familiar with. They're going back to like a different mythology. It's the thing I like about the Wendigo episode. Yeah, is they're going. Let's go into Hindu mythology. Let's find a monster from there. Let's get people into it. It's got different properties. Like we're not just going back to another ghost. We know how ghosts work now. Like we're doing something different. Uh, we know how ghosts work. Uh, yeah, we're basically hunters now. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, like I, I like that. I think that element works well. Mm-hmm. The creepy clown thing weirdly plays less than you think it would. Like you don't see the clown actually do killings which is in a way creepier but all of those clown setups are also like they don't even fight it as a clown no. at the end you know what i mean like there's no, no moment of like dean being like i've always hated clowns there's like which actually sam is the one who was always that's right clowns. yeah but you know what i mean like they don't really go into that they fight it invisible so that's <coughs> i think it's not bad but it feels like it's an indicator of one of those episodes where it's kind of got like half an idea and then yeah. it doesn't it's not like a real tight episode like some of them are where it's in a really tightly written episode. I would expect they'd also be fighting it as a, as a clown. Sam would be freaked out that it's a, like it would yeah. be a kind of that sort of thing. This one is more like we have this. We picked a cool monster. We've got a couple of things about that. But the episode's really more about. Yeah. 
you know, going to Harvell's, yeah. learning about more stuff with John, his sort of secret life, yeah. them with the emotional fallout. It's a very like there's a lot of scenes of Sam and Dean being like, are you okay? You got to deal with this. I'm dealing with it. I'm okay. Like there's a lot of that in this episode and they need to have it in there. It'd be weird to overlook it. Yeah. But I think those episodes always just pull back a little bit for sure. For me, I think, um, yeah, decent monster, pretty good, but not, necessarily like the tightest episode and maybe a little heavy on like how many conversations they have about yeah. John. I'm going to give this three and a half pipes laid. <laughs> wow. Bright brass pipes. Of that. Yeah. So I brass pipe. <laughs> I love this episode. This, this episode, I get what you're saying, but this episode does a lot yes. because in a normal, like even in the first season, to have to address what happened in the previous episode, bring in three new characters, have them deal with their feelings about their dad's death, which just happened, show the funeral, right? Sh- talk about now they have to find this demon, bring a new monster into that. It's so much for one episode. That's and it, true. And for me, it never felt like, like lost. It felt like there was a clear... Like beginning, middle, yeah. and end. Sure. They brought in these characters, gave them so much character in such a short amount of time. Right. Without it feeling like you're giving all of this backstory, you're not. You're giving all of this sort of like, uh, um, like, uh, ex, like, yeah, expedition, ex- yeah. exposition, yeah, exposition. I think. I, I love that we're starting the whole, oh, like there's this, like these two guys actually have fears. You're bringing in the right. Sam's got a fear of clowns thing, which is very funny. Yeah. But they have to sort of uh, go against that. There, there's this funny thing with like Dean seeming like he's like, that he doesn't like blind people. Like it's, there's a lot of really funny thing, little there things. There are good in this. little moments. There's a lot of good moments. While still being there. like genuinely scary and not, a, and, and using sort of the like Hitchcocky thing where you never actually see no. anything. You don't happen. even get like the silhouette sort of thing. You don't see, you just hear later, it's like they were ripped to shreds. You're yeah. like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, but you never see a corpse. Or but it's, anything, but yeah. it's like genuinely scary. I mean, you were legit scared through that. Certainly creeped out. But again, I think the thing that disappointed me is the clown thing doesn't stay through it. Like, I get that the monster is not a clown. Yes. But like they're they're so heavy on the creepiness of the clown at the beginning. And then it never, the clown part never pays off. I think the problem is, is there's no like the only clown demon monster, right? Like it's not actually a thing. Yeah. 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 Perhaps. Yeah. I guess. I think I just wanted the clown part of it to stay in there. Like, or it, it is invisible, or you see it shape change into the cloud, like, something. But yeah. I think that's the bit that kind of disappointed me. But. So I am going to give this 4.5. Wow. Uh, ch- children who shouldn't have access to uh, the main door of the house. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think if we've... I'm just having a little quick look here. I don't think we've ever been this far apart. No, probably We're always not. basically within 0. 0.5. I love this, this is, episode. This is the furthest apart we've... Oh, my God. We're not all right. They're <laughs> not all right. We're not all right. It's happening. Oh, my God. My single man tear. Yeah, I'm going to smash up our podcast trunk. I'm Dean. Wait, that's not my mixer. Leave that mixer alone. <laughs> it's very expensive. We got this mixer from dad. <laughs> Daddy's just mixing it up. No, not from daddy. <laughs> uh, well, that is it for this week. If you have a note about this episode yeah. or something previous, or maybe you just want to ask us a question. Did we miss an opportunity to bring in a beloved character like yeah. a biohazard side guy oh. or Mr. Yab? Well, in... You know, R.I.P. Peter Ellis, Mr. Yamashiro's Mirrors. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the creator. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we love getting Hope questions about that, the show. Like, weirdly specific antique shop in the sky. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so if, yeah, if you want to send us any sh- questions at all, I mean, we could always do a questions episode. So p- yeah, feel, that'd be kind of fun, maybe. Uh, yeah. Please feel 
uh, feel free to reach out to us through our email. Uh, ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com. And we're constantly thirsting over Dean on our social media oh, accounts. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Uh, it's at ghostfacerspod, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah, it's unseasonably dry. I'm super thirsty. Yeah. Yeah, like that Super Bowl ad with Michael B. Jordan. Too many yeah. things are getting too wet around here. <laughs> I fucking love that. Oh, I could not believe that. Uh, and if you like this show and want more of content from the two of us, we have another podcast. Yeah, check out the Dr. DC podcast. It's about DC Comics. Uh, we answer listener questions, and it's just a you know fun chat to d- uh, dive into the lore of superheroes as opposed to monsters. But if you heard us talking about Martian Manhunter in oh. this episode, head over there. Yeah. And check that out. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk. podcast.